All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome. I know you're excited. I know you cannot wait to begin, and I'm right there with you. I can't wait to begin as well. We're going to have a uh, special guest today for you, uh, Yehuda Reamer, the Pew Pew Jew. Pew 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 Pew. Yes, indeed. It is a brand new month. Yeah, it is. And uh, we had a miracle happen over here in the mountainous west. Uh, 99% of the snow has melted. Not all of it. There's still a lot up in the mountains. The mountains are still white capped, but uh, the snow on the ground is actually melted. I know you're relieved for me, aren't you? Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to talk about, uh, we've got a Duracoat finished firearm segment for today. We're going to talk about stickers. We're going to talk about sticky stuff. Uh, Brownells bullet points. Did you get yourself a Brownells retro gun? Did you? Did you not? Oh, we'll talk about that. Student of the home room being dangerous on demand. Uh, and some people don't get the message. And uh, then we're going to have our special guest. All of that on today's super cool, fantastical episode of Student of the Gun Radio. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear. We also discuss current events and politics because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping ogre, Zach Martin. Now, give it up for your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. <laughs> it's interesting to me how, or if you didn't know, if you're like, what, should I keep listening to this guy? Should I, I listen to him? Yeah, you should. You should listen to me. Uh, you guys remember last week how we uh, I mentioned during the Student of the Gun University podcast, that's right, the, the standalone, single-topic, short-form, easy-to-digest. Uh, yes, yeah, I, I know. Some of you are listening. Some of you aren't, but that's okay. You're an American. You don't have to listen if you don't want to. So we did that. We put it out. We posted it. And then Amoland.com broke a story they did yes they did they broke a story about how biofire the parent company of the smart gun is refusing to allow independent reviews of their products <laughs> that's a big sign of quality right there as everybody knows uh and then apparently they've had some issues with the guns not recognizing the fingerprints or not recognizing the faces and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I guess my point is this, is I, I, I don't want to blow my own horn, but... <laughs> See, I told you so. And even, you know, and here's the thing with that, with this smart gun technology, even if the fingerprint thing worked exactly like it was supposed to, and even if the facial recognition thing worked exactly like it was supposed to, it's still a bad idea. It's still a bad idea. All right. All right. We've got a review of the week or we will have a review of the week. Now, all right. I'm going to give you guys a caveat. Some of you are, who are, who are new listeners. Uh, and some of you guys out there, you're new listeners, and you're like, well, hold on a second. How is it that this guy, this student of the gun guy who I just discovered, how is it that he could possibly be against smart gun technology? How could he be against that? I mean, isn't that the responsible thing to do? I mean, you know, if it, if it saves one child's life, if it saves the ch life of one child, isn't it worth it? Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, smart anything. Smart this, smart that. We, we, as listeners, you as listeners, you need to smarten up and realize exactly what is going on when people use the term or when companies use the term smart. Zach, do you remember a little story last summer when it got hot in the summer? You remember when it got hot in the summer? I remember it being hot, yes. But yeah, I, I know. You're like, what? When does it ever get hot in the summer? That's crazy. And thousands of people in Colorado were really, they were, they were angry. 
Because what happened to them? They were hot. How come they were hot and angry? How come they were hot and bothered, Zach? Do you remember? Because their smart thermometers wouldn't let them turn their AC down. Yeah, their smart thermostats. Yeah, the uh, the the power company said, "Oh, it's it's summertime and it's hot and it and it requires a lot of electricity to run air conditioning." So here's what we're going to do: we're going to lock those out at seventy eight degrees or whatever it was, and you can't turn it down. And they got mad, and they said, ah, 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 that's what you signed up for. When you signed up for this, you agreed in the contract to let us remote control it and shut it off when we wanted to shut it off. You say, well, that's a thermostat, Paul. Who cares? Okay. Remember when uh, about a year ago when we were all taught or the, the latest thing became hate Russia, hate Putin, love Ukraine? We didn't see. We didn't know before eighteen months ago that we were supposed to hate Russia, hate Putin, and love Ukraine. We didn't know that until it became the latest thing, and we were told to change our Facebook profiles to the Ukrainian flag. You remember what uh, the the uh, the intelligentsia what they were calling for? Their stories. You can look it up right now. Uh, they were calling for Elon Musk to do what? Zach, what did they want Musk to do? With to Tesla. shut off people's uh, smart cars. They wanted him to shut up. They wanted him to remotely shut off the Teslas in Russia to punish them. That's what you should do. Which now, I, don't, I don't see how the turning off random Russian citizens' cars hurts, you know, Vladimir Putin. But hey, whatever. Well, I don't I, think they have you gotta do something though. Tanks. Yeah. Well, the, you know? the, the thing is, is you, you obviously that's you know randomly shutting off. The citizens of Russia's Teslas is not going to hurt Vladimir Putin. It's not going to cripple his army. But And it didn't matter because we, we're being ginned up to hate everyone, everything Russian, everyone Russian, because we have to love Ukraine. We have to love them. You're like, oh, okay. Well, come on. Well, that's just, that's just Teslas. It's, they're, and they're, they're what, what kind of cars are they? Smart cars. Oh, they're smart cars, right? Uh, you guys remember all the way back to the summer of 2000 and the fall of 2000 and the winter of 2000? Do you remember when the, uh, and then going into 2021, these cellular phone companies had to admit that they'd been voluntold by the, by the governments of California, the governments of New York, the governments of the United States to surrender the data from the phones so that they could create contact contact tracing algorithms. And in, in really hardcore socialist countries like Australia and New Zealand in Europe and so forth, they began creating lists. And if your phone, of course, it wasn't you as a human who was near another human. They had no idea if humans were near each other. But what they knew was this phone belonging to Johnny was near this phone belonging to Susie. And Susie tested COVID positive. And because Susie and Johnny's phones were close to each other, that means they were close to each other. And now Johnny is contact tracing. And we need to... There were people in Australia that were loaded up in vans and involuntarily forced against their will into COVID camps because... Their phone was near another phone whose owner tested positive for COVID. Yeah, that really happened on planet Earth. So now the latest trend, we've got smart thermostats and smart cars and smartphones. And so the latest trend is, well, we need to have smart guns. And that's a responsible thing to do. What's to keep? I think, I think. I think this is one of those things where just like, you know, Total Recall was really cool. Not Total Recall, uh, Dread. Judge Dread. Dread. Was, really cool. was it Dread or, or uh, Judgment Day? Dread. Dread, okay. Because I remember there was the, the one scene in the one with, uh, what's his name? The the dude that everyone likes. Arnold Sylvester Stallone? No. That, Rob that Schneider? No, the new one. Rob Schneider was not in. Well, I mean, he was in the movie, but he he wasn't Dread. I know he wasn't dread. Mark Cuban. Not Mark Cuban. Dude, 
Fill in the blank. The I don't know what the one. hell you're talking about. The point is, there was a scene in the newer, the newer one where somebody tried to take his gun and shoot him, and then their uh, hand exploded. Oh. oh, okay. So that that's step two with the smart gun thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, so riddle me this, Batman. If your gun, if your self-defense tool is wired to the internet, right? Because it's, it's got to be in the base, and it's digital, and it's electronic, so it has to be... Well, it, you're going to have constant updates because I mean, you can't run a digital system without updates, can you? Well, I mean, you, you, you could. It, it would be very stupid, but I, that doesn't mean they're not doing it. Yeah. And, and the, the facial recognition software, and da 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 So what would, what would keep a third party from hacking into that system and turning them all off or wiping them? Or disabling them. Or if the government can order a private company like a cellular phone, like a mobile phone company, if the government can order them to surrender the tracking data of your phone to them or bribe them, they're like, oh, they didn't order them. They gave them $6 million and they bought the data. Okay. Why wouldn't the government be able to order BioFire to surrender all of the data for everyone who owns a biofire gun. They've got it right there. It's all digital. They can just drop load them a file. Oh, they wouldn't do that. The biofire company wouldn't surrender all the data. Now, when the biofire company sets these up and you register your fingerprint and your face, where does that information go? Well, it's, it's on a secure server that can never be accessed by anyone other than the biofire company for, for official company business. Really? Really? Anybody remember, what was that dating or that cheat on your spouse app? Uh, Ashley Madison. Yeah. Remember Ashley Madison, how they got like a million people to sign up and then poof, the list went public. What? Yeah, that never. If you if you sign up for this stuff, you are a fool. You're a fool. And my my uh, thing, I'm, I'm this is the last thing I'm going to say about the whole biofire thing. Is if it's such a great idea, then why isn't every police department in every city and every state? carrying these guns right now because they're still in testing well i thought they were ready to go i, I thought well, I, I mean i thought the story was hey you can order one right now get online order one right now it says you can pre-order it oh you can pre-order it well yeah. before number one before i would agree to this i'll never agree to it uh but if it's such a great idea take away all the g-locks and all the sigs and all the everything walters and stuff from every police agency in America and give them all these digital fingerprint guns and let them use them. And once, once they've done that for 10 years, then I'll, I'll consider it a viable thing. What do you think the chances of that happening are? No, let's go ahead and say slim to none. So there you go. Yeah. All right. Review of the week. Real quick, down and dirty. Jared's got us a review of the week, and it comes from. It says uh, it comes from Guess I'm Me on iTunes. It's a short and sweet one. It says can't get enough. I could listen to the professor all day. Well, thank you, you for leaving that review. Guess I'm Me. There you go. Congratulations to you. Guess I'm Me for listening, and you know who you are. All right, it's time for a dirt coat finished firearm moment of the week. Ba-da-ba-ba. You know, we're getting closer and closer to the people are like, oh, the, you know, there were some people when the, when the matrix came out, that are like, yeah, that absolutely could happen. And then there were other people like, you're an idiot. There's no possible way that could happen. And the idea that we'd all be tied together as this one unit and that everyone is reliant and attached to everyone else. Come on. I mean, man. I think I'm, 
I think I'm halfway convinced that I, I live in a simulation, but we'll see, I guess. This is the Matrix. Hey. Smart. Are- this is the Matrix. Smart everything is the Matrix. You have to be a part of the system. You can't operate independently on your own. You, you have to be a part of the system. But I'm going to digress and go right to you, Dirk Code Finish Fire, a moment. So last week we talked about the sexy high point contest and about, well, what that was all about, essentially. You need to get a some type of a high point firearm. I don't care which one it is. I don't care what brand or what flavor, not what brand, but what flavor it is, whether it's a C9 or a, a 40 or a 45 or, or whatever. Um, go ahead and get one and then get yourself some Duracoat. And put it on there. But if you want to do something, if you don't want to do fancy stuff, right? You want to do sexy stuff. You want to do patterns and camouflages and so forth. Well, the first place you should go is this little thing, this little place called DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com. And if you go to DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com, well, you will find uh, templates, You'll find templates. Yes, indeed. You'll find templates. You'll find stencils. You'll find camouflage templates and gun tattoos and camo packs and so on and so forth. Now, if you do that, if you go there and you look through the whole entire selection of gun tattoos, and there is still a student of the gun gun tattoo, uh, if you do that and there is a uh, there's a skull one and there's all kinds of stuff, if you go through that and you don't find anything you like, you're like, oh, I just, nothing I like. Well, you could get the blank stencil material. They actually have the, that you can, it's make it yourself. Uh, or you could pop over to our friends at freedomstencils.com and you go to freedomstencils.com and when you get there, you will find even more. Even more stencils slash templates slash, well, all kinds of stuff. There's animals and Americana and Millspec and pirates and, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, there's, there's two options for you there. First, step number one, go to DuracoatFirearmFinishes.com and go to their camouflage template and gun tattoos and check those out. And after you've checked those out, uh, if you don't find some, anything that you want or you think you need something different or whatever, then go to Freedom Stencils and check those guys out. But either way, between the two of those, between Duracoat and Freedom Stencils, I can only imagine that you're going to find everything you could possibly want in the template slash stencil department, right? And if you still can't find what you want, well, they actually have blank ones, and you can just take a exacto knife, a zacto knife, uh, or a razor, and make your own. How's that sound? Sound good? All right. Is it a zacto knife if I'm using it? Uh, yeah, it's a zacto knife. Yes. It, there's uh, real quick. Some, yes. Somebody just uh, we're talking about this. Uh, Nick in the Discord said somebody needs to make a hippo gun. Nick, I will vote for that to be the winner. If oh, they do well. a hippo! <laughs> a talent, so you, like good at painting out there. If you can make a hippo gun, yeah, absolutely. Who's got talent? Who's got talent? Yeah. So uh, you want to take a? You get like a big fat old uh, forty-five uh, high point C forty-five or whatever, uh, or or maybe a ten mil. Bonus points if you use the student of the hippo logo. Yeah. <laughs> when did that happen? When did what happen? How did you do that? How did I do what? The student of the hippo? Yeah, there's a student of the hippo icon. Yeah, I made that like months a ago. Year ago but oh, the really? Discord. Yeah, it's a Discord emote. If you if you gen, genuinely if you're somebody who is interested in making the hippo gun and you want to put that on there, just let me know. I'll send you the high quality file. That'd be cool. <laughs> I <play> hippo. <laughs> I wonder how things are going down there in Colombia if they've uh, if they've been able to wrangle up to rustle up those hippos and they're going to ship them. Where were they going to send them to some place in Mexico or something? A, a zoo in Mexico, There's a couple a of game park in Mexico. Oh, India. Yeah. There was a one place in Mexico and there was another place in India. And if the Indians take those hippos, they're crazy. They're, they're crazy. 
but whatever, you know. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's what you need to do uh, for to enter the sexy high point contest. And uh, like I said, we already have one prize lined up. Uh, the one prize will be a uh, two-day class of your choosing at Tactical Response. So uh, get in on it. Get, get moving. Get rolling. Juxi.com. J-U-X-X-I. Let's pop over there. Juxi.com. And see what we're looking like here. Here we go. So we got the, the official student of the gun channel on Juxi.com. And we currently have 2,247 2, subscribers to that. And that is, that is child's play. You guys need to get your butts over there and get subscribed to juxi.com. And, uh, and since somebody asked earlier when we were off air, uh, I will let you guys know now. Uh, some of you might know about the, because we mentioned it on a bunch of different stuff, the uh, USMC Leadership Traits series that we're putting out on our socialist media and also uh, YouTube for public consumption and someone asked well it's got to be on juxy and the answer is it's not at the moment because we filmed them you know vertically in the shorts fashion uh but i uh so i haven't been putting them up there but i will be taking the full series and putting it up on juxy for you to enjoy uh so look forward to that relatively soon well thank you zach thank you for doing that all right yes indeed moving on and I think it's time to move on. It is time for me to be quiet and you to listen louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called seven training tips that could save your life. Get instant access by joining the student lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch student of the gun TV, read the blog and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes, indeed. That's what you can and should do. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. SOTG. Yes, indeed. I got <laughs> That's short for student of the gun. Now, we do have an S-O-T-G-U. That's Sierra Oscar Tango Golf Uniform.com. We do own that. Now, the somebody, there's some pirate out there that wants us to give them thousands and thousands of dollars for the SOTG.com. We're just not going to do it. Not going to do it. Not going to be held hostage. <laughs> no, it's capitalism. If, if you think someone will buy that, go for it. But nobody's going to. And that's where we are. It really isn't that where we are now? People had, what, 20 years ago when the, when the domain pirates bought Pepsi.com, Coke.com, you know, stuff like that, and then they held it hostage and said, you have to pay us for this domain name, and people did. And now you just put, I mean, how, when's the last time you actually typed the exact domain into a search bar? Like www dot I want to it's still good to have eat cheese dot com or something like that. You know. Uh yeah, it's good to have, but is it worth thousands of dollars? Is it worth me giving you twenty thousand dollars for SOTG.com? Honestly, dot com? It it genuinely just depends on how big your company is. Because mm -hmm. there right, are two hundred thousand. Yeah. Two hundred. Uh, there are still people who, because here's the thing: you don't need to put HTTP colon backslash backslash. You can just type in Coca-Cola.com, and like people still do that. And then if it takes you to a freaking pirate or like you know the Pepsi logo twerking or something, it's bad for the brand. So it's worth. That's it. pretty funny. Yeah. The Pepsi logo twerking. It's Pepsi logo twerking. All right. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know that we have this little segment called Brownells Bullet Points, brought to you by Brownells.com, and we talk about guns and stuff. So this week's Brownells Bullet Points is going to be a lesson. Let this be a lesson to you. Let this be a lesson to you. Remember a couple of years ago, three, four years ago, when we did a, we did a whole bunch of videos and, and about the Brownells retro line of guns, right? You guys remember that? Do you? You remember that? We did. We did a whole entire, well, we did several. And we actually got some. 
We got the uh, the BRN sixteen uh, E one and the BRN one one seven E two, and those were obviously shot for shot replicas of the original guns, right? And there were there were several others. They had the BRN uh, ten, which was like the AR ten. Um, and they, it was, they were, for me at least, they, that was all really cool stuff. And they were actual, fully completed guns. They were ready to go. Well, if you got one, good on you, because they are not making them anymore. And now you're sad. You're like, oh, now I'm a sad panda. Well, the good news is that even if you you were too slow to get an original Brownells retro rifle. Now, if you did get one, good on you. Pat yourself on the back. Tell yourself, good job. But if you didn't, you can assemble one from parts that you get that you get from, well, Brownells. Uh, and one of the things that uh, they actually came out with, it's, it's a uh, an up updated, upgraded version of the BRN-180 uh, folding stock. It's like the like the AR-18 or the AR-180 or the Armalite side folding stock. Uh, they have those available. And if you want to assemble, build, construct your own gun, well, they've got pretty much everything on that you would need. Now, I'm not going to go over every single part you need for an AR-15. Uh, this isn't a how to build an AR-15 segment but uh, there there are a lot of companies that have everything as a matter of fact if you go to their guns and gear section or the smith buster section or they have an entire video section called how to build if you go to how to there's a how to build and then you fill in the blank how to convert an ar-15 pistol into a rifle how to uh install an a law tactical folder, how to install a handguard, how to, they've got dozens, hundreds of how to's. So if you don't know how to put together this or attach this or that or the other thing to your uh, black rifle, to your AR-15, well, they're there to help you. Uh, Caleb with the perfect hair is there to help you. So check out everything that they have to offer at brownells.com. And yes, if you if you waited, now the lesson is, is twofold. Number one, the lesson is when Paul tells you about something, if you think that's cool and interesting and a good idea, you should probably jump on that. But if you don't and you didn't and you couldn't afford it or you didn't have time or whatever, you know, the good news is you can still find the pieces, parts, and components, and you're an American. Go ahead and put one together for yourself. There you go. All right, now it's time for me to be quiet and to let Zach talk for a little bit. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. What's new, Zach? Well, just uh, a quick reminder to everybody that uh, right now on ShopSOTG.com, you can get the critically and commercially acclaimed The Four Pillars of Fighting by our buddy James Yeager. Uh, and we, we recently, we've, it's actually gotten some press, uh, thanks to, uh, our buddies over at who shared it again, shootingwire.com over at shootingwire.com who shared the, uh, hundreds of people attend James Yeager book signing at, uh, NRA 2023, uh, article or press release. Uh, thank them for doing, I uh, thank them very much for doing that. And if you have not gotten your copy yet, you can go to shopsotg.com right now and acquire yourself a copy. Yes, you can. You can and you should. If you don't have a copy of that book, get one. Get one right now. All right, Student of the Gun Homeroom is about being what? About being dangerous on demand. And it's brought to you every week by Crossbreed Holsters.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you go to CrossFitHolster.com, use the promotional code SOTG, SOTG to save some money. Dangerous on demand, yes, indeed, or not. Are you dangerous on demand or are you not dangerous on demand? Well, depending on where you are and where you live, you may live in an area uh, or a city or a state or a country that looks at you and says you are a peasant and you are not allowed to be dangerous on demand and you are not allowed to protect yourself. So I guess in that case, it sucks to be you. But we've got uh, a story here that you need to be aware of because the world is going insane and ignoring it is not going to make it any better. Jared, we got a story here from foxnews.com and, uh, it was dated April 20th, 2023. I actually put a date on that. This Not trans woman crazy. crawled into bed with assault, with, crawled into bed with an assaulted female resident at women's shelter. Mm. Police in Windsor, Ontario told a local outlet the suspect should be referred to as a woman. What? A self-identified transgender woman in Ontario, Canada, was arrested Tuesday after allegedly sexually assaulting a woman in a woman's shelter. Desiree Anderson, 32, also known as Cody D'Entremont, turned herself in hours after authorities issued a press release and a mugshot seeking information on the suspect. Police began investigating Anderson on April 4th following a report from a woman who claimed the suspect had climbed in with her and sexually assaulted her while she was staying at a woman's shelter in Windsor. All right, Jared, I, I know you, you're, you're, Jared's got some snot in his head right now, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up. What in the actual F is going on here on planet Earth? If, if you you, in Canada, so we can't expect too much from them. It, you can, yeah, but this, they're, we're, they're, we're not that far off, okay? If you guys can open the story, this dude... There's a picture of the dude with like a five o'clock shadow, right? So we're we're currently living in a world where a a where women who are either have been victims of psychological abuse or physical abuse and who are seeking shelter, they want to go somewhere where they can be safe, where the abuser or abusers cannot get to them, right? That's what women's shelters are all about, right? Uh, we had, when when I was a, a police officer, we had designated houses. There was one specifically in the, in the town in which I worked that was a designated women's shelter home, but it didn't have a big sign out front that said women's shelter, Matter of fact, it was very nondescript, and the location of that was kept private, and it was not public, right? So if women, if a woman needed to shelter from a domestic issue, right, an abusive spouse or abusive ex-boyfriend or whatever, and they went to the women's, you know, task force or whatever, they would take them secretly uh it's kind of like witness protection kind of a thing to this house right and where and it wasn't advertised it wasn't public it was where they could be quote unquote safe so here we are we are so we are living in a world where people are so eaten up by this psychotic lunacy that somehow a person born a man born the male of the human species, can just on their own decide, I am now a woman. No, you're not. You're a man with mental illness. Or a woman, a person, a human being, a female of the human species, decides, I'm going to go to a doctor and have them chop off my boobs. And uh, I'm going to cut my hair short. Now I'm a man. I'm going to change my name to Fred. You're not a man. You're a, wo- you're a mutilated woman who is going to be sorry eventually, uh, but you're not a man, okay? You're, you're still a woman. You know, you're a mutilated woman uh, with a bad haircut, but you're still a woman. 
uh, dudes, if, if you if you know if you are born a man and you decide to go to a doctor and have him chop off your pee pee and give you I don't know what goes on down there and I don't care, you're still a dude. You're still a man. You're a mutilated man uh, with a woman's name, but you're not a woman. And we can't seem to like we don't have enough adults in the world. So in Toronto or Windsor, Ontario, in Windsor, Ontario, you have a women's shelter. And I'm guessing that like most women's shelters, these this place is designated as a safe place for women who have experienced abuse, psychological, sexual, physical abuse. You can go here and feel safe, right? So what are they doing? Well, they're letting a dude with severe mental illness come in. And what happens when you let a man who's pretending to be a woman come into your woman's shelter? Well, and apparently this isn't the first one. It says last August, convicted sex offender and self-identified transgender woman Shane Jacob Green, also known as Stephanie, was arrested and charged with two counts of sexual assault at a woman's shelter in Perry Sound, Ontario, after allegedly raping one of the women there. No. You mean this already happened once and they didn't learn their lesson? What? That's crazy. Okay, and if you see the photographs of these two monsters, like, uh, people, people, people. Now, I, I, I've got something to throw out there. Go ahead and throw it out, Zach. What should be the moral, if not legal, line of this, of all this? Because there's, so even we've admitted, if you want to go home and put on a dress and wear a pair of pumps and call yourself Ashley, who cares? Yeah. But it's when it's affecting other people. Mm -hmm. So what's the line? What's the line? Of, I don't care what you want to call yourself. We're not going to treat you that way. Is, is, it, is it just an actual crime? Like the second you commit a crime, it's like, okay, the fantasy's over. No, no. The, 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 the line is, this is a women's shelter. You have no, to be born. No, I don't understand. No, 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 you have to be born no, with a vagina I'm, to come in. What I'm, okay. Because what, 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 what I'm getting at is what, what, how the article started transgender woman who should be referred to as a woman sexually assaults another yeah, woman. Yeah, so, no, no, this like, is insane. This is this is freaking like, insane. What is, what is the line where it's like, okay, we're going to stop playing the game? So, this, so the police, uh, you can't misgender this person. First of all, you're a psychopath. Um, I, you know, I, I saw a kid, I saw another story somewhere where a kid wore a t-shirt to school that said there are only two genders, and he got, like, suspended or whole day i take the shirt off and whatever uh well the kid was wrong actually because there's three what are the answers to the to the question gender boys masculine feminine neutral right masculine feminine neutral what the what the t-shirt should have said was there are only two sexes male female end of discussion and you don't get to choose your father did your father chose like when you were conceived but we we got to stop this. We've got we've got Lou. We got this. And the, here's the thing: the state is complicit. And the reason I put this into the dangerous on demand crossbreed holsters, the student of the gun home room, right? The reason is because people say, "Well, you don't need fill in the blank, whatever," because that's the job of the state. That's why we have police. To, keep, to protect you. Really? Because in the, in the case of these two women that were raped inside of a women's shelter, the state promised, well, you, and if you guys know anything about these women's shelters or about these state-run things, you're, you're essentially a prisoner while you're in there. You say, no, I can carry my gun in there. N -n 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 no, you can't. First of all, you can't in Canada anyway because you're a slave to the state. Uh, in Canada, you guys, if there's anyone up in Canada still that has, I don't know, a desire for liberty 
Um, good luck, man. Good luck. But this is a lesson. If you think the state is going to protect you and keep you safe, you're wrong. The state is not going to protect you. The state is not going to keep you safe. And they have no desire to do so. Unless it makes you a victim, and unless it makes you a slave, and unless it allows them to control you. The state can't and won't keep you safe. The state will control you. They want to do that. But when it comes to psychotic, lunatic monsters, they're not going to protect you from them. As a matter of fact, they're going to side with the monster. We've got a a, a psychotic lunatic goes into a women's shelter, says, hi, my name's Shelly. Hi, my name is Sheena. And she had a little funky comedina. So Sheena. It's ma'am. Ma'am, it's ma'am. So it's ma'am goes into a women's shelter. And instead of the people running it, instead of exercising fucking independent thought and saying and looking at this creature and be like, hell to the now now. That is not a woman. You are not a woman. You don't get to come into a women's shelter. No, they're cowards. They're psychotic. They're participants in this. So they just let him in. And he, and this this is what makes it worse. He sexually assaults a woman. And then the police are, after realizing what happened, After finding out, okay, we let a dude pretending to be a woman come into a women's shelter. The dude pretending to be a woman climbs into bed with a victim of a sexual or or some kind of assault, right? Someone who's seeking shelter from abuse. And then they're like, well, you need to make sure that in the media that you refer to it as a woman. Seriously. So knowing that this monster assaulted a woman inside of a shelter, your first concern is the is the like make believe feelings of the monster? Are you kidding? When are people going to stand up and say, "No, we've had enough of this crap. No more." People are, uh, well, I mean, we saw what happened last time they tried that. What happened? What, in Canada? They got called terrorists. They got all their money taken away. They were arrested and put on trains. And, up. Oh, we have a guest coming in. Yeah, we've guessed. That was a, the sign meeting. We've got a, a guest. So that brings us right up to uh, our special guest. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you still live in the United States of America, uh, if you still live in free America, you are able to protect yourself and be dangerous on demand because if you think the state has an interest in protecting you as an individual you are sadly mistaken the state cares more about the make-believe feelings of the people who are going to attack you than they do about you that is the lesson from today's student of the gun homeroom all right jared you want to admit our uh, our uh, guest all right, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, we have Yehuda Reamer, also known on the uh, on the socialist media and the internet as the Pew Pew Jew. Pew 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 Pew. Welcome, Yehuda. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be back. It's been a while. Yes, it has. What is your shirt? I see gun control is, and I don't see the bottom. Gun control is not kosher. <laughs> there you go. It is not. It is not kosher. All right. So, uh, did you make it, did we miss you at NRA or were you not there? So, unfortunately, I didn't make it this year. Okay. NRA, a lot, NRA a lot of times, and again, I'm obviously, I'm not expecting them to cater to the Jewish world, but a lot of times it coincides with Passover. Ah, gotcha. um, so, Passover ended Thursday night, the NRA show started Friday, and for me to brush and try to make it, Plus, I'm not going to be there on Saturday, and this is not worth going just for a Sunday. So, there you go. It's usually it was actually way early this year. Normally, it's like the like 
April 29, 30 and May 1st or the 30th and the 1st and 2nd, something. For whatever reason, they had to push it up a couple of weeks this year. So Yeah, so it was annoying. I mean, I, I enjoyed going, and I've never been to Indianapolis, so it would have been a cool trip to go to. But it is what it is. Uh, I've become very used to it, uh, missing a lot of things that happened over the weekends. Just comes with the territory, and, you know, yeah. it's my choice, so. Right. So, uh, Jared, Jared's got some questions for you. And, and well, the main thing is one of the recent posts that you put up and he wanted to, to ask you about that and have you elaborate on it. Yeah. I was scrolling through the Instagram and I saw a, a really cool picture of, um, of his great grandfather holding a picture of his dad, holding a picture of him and then holding a picture of his son. So there's four generations of the Reamer family right there. And, I thought that was a fascinating picture and it was uh, enough to stop my scroll and make me actually read the description and the description of what was the most powerful out of the whole thing. Uh, so I just want you to tell that story about your grandfather being hidden in the ditch and, and then, you know, fast forward to 45 years later where your father was actually able to recover the body. Uh, yeah. So my grandfather, so my great grandfather, uh, who I did not get a chance to ever meet. He died during the w war. He was a livestock farmer uh, back in a place called Kolome. And it was under like Russia, Ukrainian slash Polish borders, like all wrapped in one, depending on, you know, the moment in history. Uh, and a poor farmer came to my grand great grandfather and said, hey, listen, I have bought so many live, you know, not cows and stuff to work the fields and every time i buy one it dies and he didn't buy it from my grand my great grandfather he just bought them from around dies he goes do you have anything even a horse and my great grandfather's like yeah i actually have a horse that i can sell you uh and the farmer's like unfortunately i just don't have the money so my great grandfather basically said hey, don't worry about it one day you'll pay me back uh world war ii starts nazis are moving in and around that area, it was getting really bad. And my great-grandfather with my great-grandmother, my grandfather, and my great-uncle um, went to the farmer and said, you need to hide us. Uh, we're, we can't get out. Uh, you know, Poland, this area has been surrounded. And we, we need your help. And the farmer, without hesitating, said, Absolutely especially because the horse that my grandfather gave him literally was a workhorse. I mean, changed everything for the farmer, saved the farmer's life and his family because they were now able to work the land and produce food. So on the land, there was this big farm, uh, I'm sorry, a, um, a barn. And my grand and the, the farmer hid all four of them in a ditch that was smaller than most people's dining room table. Uh, we're talking about maybe like eight, I don't know, six feet across by like four feet wide, like really small. And you had two adults and two children in there. Uh, my grandfather was, I think like 14 at the time. Uh, and from there, the farmer put them in there, put a gigantic pile of hay, and locked them up there. Uh, and they were there for 19 months living in this ditch. They were only allowed out for one hour every night, as long as the coast was clear, just to stretch their legs. And yeah, they were there for 19 months. My grandfather tells me the story how when he was finally liberated from that area, he took his shirt off and it basically crawled away. There was so many lice and bugs living on it. His skin was so damaged from, you know, never being able to bathe or things like that. But in, in, during those 19 months, my great grandfather, uh, unfortunately, uh, died. Wasn't killed, just malnutrition and, and, I mean, literally living in a ditch. So he passed away, and one night my my grandfather, who again was fourteen, I think I think fourteen at the time, maybe thirteen, something like that. Him and the farmer's son 
went in the middle of the night to bury my great my great grandfather. Now, what's interesting is the farmer had just planted on his property three trees. Um, you know, weren't big, but my great my my grandfather has always had this weird sort of I don't know, call it a a I don't know, maybe it was a peripheral issue. I don't know, but if you had three things, one, two, three, or if you put up three pictures on the wall, he was never able to line them up straight, never, um, what's it called, the centered them. Everything was center right. So middle of the night, they dug a ditch, threw, threw the body in, covered it up, and that was it. And they literally threw the body in. My my great-grandmother, my grandfather, and my great-uncle all survived the war, eventually making their way to America. A uh, funny story about their trip to America. When they got to New York, the customs agent's like, okay, where do you want to live? And they're like, New York, because that's really the only place they knew. This was 1946. And the customs agent said, I'm sorry, New York is all full. You, you, you need to pick somewhere else. It's full. And you need to either pick – well, I mean, if you think about it, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, thousands of hundreds of thousands of refugees coming over since the war ended. So he's like, yeah, we, we just, we can't house you here. So my grandfather is like, Oh, so where can we go? And he's like, well, you can either move to Los Angeles or Dallas. And my grandfather turns to my great grandmother and says, we need to move to Los Angeles. And she's like, why? And he, he explained to my great grandmother I mean, she knew, she knew, but she he explained that the word Dallas in Yiddish means poor. So uh, why would we want to why would we want to move to where poor people are? He figured people in Dallas were all poor, and that was why the city was named that. So <laughs> they cho- they chose Los Angeles. Funny thing is. I now live in Dallas, right? Like years later, <laughs> my wife and I. My wife and I moved from Los Angeles to Dallas just because it's much easier to do what I do um, when I'm like, oh, look, there is something that's highly illegal in California, but totally legal in Texas. Uh, definitely helps with me being who I am in the know. And so they moved to Dal- They moved to Los Angeles. And in 1991, I don't even remember. I've read the article a million times, but I just don't remember the years uh, in 1991, my father, and, and there's a lot more to the story than than you know what I'm going to tell you because this is this is like a this is like a series would have to be a series to get into the nitty gritty. But in 1991, my grandfather, I'm sorry, my father flew to Europe, and I mean it, it was a crazy story, you know getting stopped at the Russian border, bribing the guards with cigarettes, like American cigarettes. And like, it was a whole thing. And my father made his way to the farm that saved my family. And they knew my father was coming and he got, he gets to the farm. And it's again, it's been 45 years and they want to excavate the body and bring the body to Israel to bury the body in Israel. So how do you find a body that's 40, you know, that's been in the ground for 45 years without a, without a a marker or gravestone or anything? So my grandfather told my father, I buried the body next to three trees, right? Those three trees that the farmer had just planted. So, on the property, my father found the three trees and he's like, where do we start? And he's like, you know what? We're going to start center right. Cause my grandfather was crazy, right? Like everything, nothing could be centered within a few hours. They found the first bone. And finally they found every bone except from the knees down. The legs were completely missing. And they were like, they're like, oh my God, like, what the hell, right? Like, it's been 45 years. No one's touched this area. How come the legs are missing? And then my father realized 
that when my grandfather buried his father, they didn't have time to dig six feet down and 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 laid the body out. They dug literally a hole, dumped the body in. So instead of excavating this way, they had to excavate down. So my father dug, you know, a few feet down, and they ended up finding the legs as well. At the end of the day, they found every single bone, including every tooth. And my father was able to bring my my great grandfather to Israel and bury him in Israel. Yeah, and, that's a powerful story. Yeah, it's it's a pretty crazy story, and and I've thought long so many times, like I want to put this into a book. Um, but I, I, my hands are so full with so many things right now. Like I'm working on three new books simultaneously. And now just this morning, I thought of a new book and I'm like, immediately message my illustrator. I'm like, okay, give me a price list. I want this book done in the next year. So, you know, I'm working on so many things right now, but I need to just sit down and I write children's books and blank books. So it's kind of. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to sit down and write an actual book that has words in it. Um, that isn't for a <laughs> six year old. So I, I, I need to, I need to, I need to kind of find um, a good ghostwriter who I can lay out, you know, the, the form, the story and have them write it. Yeah. Do you ever find that if, if you don't have a book in the works that it feels wrong to you? Y- yes and no. Cause I feel it's not that it feels wrong. It kind of feels more along the lines of have I peaked, right? Like mm-hmm. I have eight books out, right? And my, from my first book, which was a book about gun safety for children, which thankfully is still doing well to my last book. And it's been about a, almost two years since my last book came out, right? My, my bullet points book, which is still pissing all the right people off. Uh-huh. Um, that book, you know, it, it's been two years, but I've had like I have one manuscript completely done. Um, I just I need to find someone who will sponsor it. Uh, you know, I need about five thousand dollars to get it sponsored. Um, not super easy. You know, there's not a lot of people who are like, oh, we'll give you five grand. Um, my next book that I thought of this morning, five grand that I need. That one might be a little easier because it's going to be. If you would see this book that I have in mind and you wouldn't know who made it, you would look at it and be like, oh, it had to be Yehuda. Absolutely. Like no one else would think of a book like that. So um, that book might be easier to find. But but to answer your question, it, it, it kind of, if I'm not having something in the works, it kind of feels like I peaked. And I'm like, oh, shoot, what am I going to, that's it. I'm, you know, eight books in. But, uh, you know, my, my dream is to, I, I would... I would love to hit 10 books in my life. If I can say, you know, at my deathbed that, hey, I've published 10 books, that's a pretty cool feeling. So it's definitely doable because I'm only 39 and I already have eight. But, yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You'll get way more than that. Uh, and you already have the concept for two more. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's fun. It, it's fun. I love it. I'm going to keep on doing it until they shut me down or I'm just like, okay, I'm done worrying about getting more books out that kind of thing yeah yeah uh, i think dad correct me if i'm wrong but i think he's got like 31 published titles now or 32 yeah it's over 40 over 40 now holy cow that's crazy i don't he, he's a writing fool i don't understand how he does it i don't have any books published under my name yet so no i have um, i get this feeling like, like uh, and it's funny because 10 12 years ago um when i wrote the 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 student of the gun book and someone said well they asked me in an interview they're like well what's the next book and i I was like uh i don't know uh i haven't thought about it yet (laughs) and but now actually i published my first book what was it 97 jared i think it was 97 um and then i went several years but but now the the process yeah it's it's funny how your brain changes and how things change and uh I'm at the point now where if I don't have a book in the works, like if it's once just there's done and there's, there's, there's not an open document that is a new book. I feel like I should, I, I feel like I should be doing it. Uh, and so I started another one the other day, but, <laughs> <laughs> and it, well, it, 
I started another one. It, it's it's almost done. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it it's it's funny how your how things change and you know you people. When I started writing magazine articles way back when, we used to kill trees and and sprinkle ink on them and staple them and sell them to people. <laughs> uh, you know, selling your first article is amazing. You know, the first time you, you someone gives you a check for an article, you're like, wow. Uh, and it seems like it's like an almost an unattainable dream. And then, then later on you realize like, Oh, one, one isn't really that hard because everybody out there, even, you know, if you're listening to me right now on the treadmill or in your car or wherever you are, everybody has one story, right? Generally, everybody has one story worth telling. Uh, but the trick is to be a writer, you know, what, what did Billy Crystal say in throw mama from the train? He would close every every class with, remember, a writer writes. Uh, and the trick is not the one. The trick is the is the two and the three and the four and, and so on and so forth. How do you continue to be productive? Uh, that's the hard thing. But we talked about all of that. And people who are, who are new, you're like, okay, that's great. We You got this special guest, and he tells a personal story about his family. What the heck does that have to do with student of the gun? <laughs> Yehuda, what does that have to do with with student of the gun or guns or firearms or, you know, it's it, it's a nice family story, but because it's it spurred me to become the pew pew Jew and like my best selling shirt says, people with ARs don't get in cattle cars. So um, you know, it's it's definitely lit a fire under me to become a Second Amendment activist to be out there fighting for our Second Amendment rights um, for everybody. I don't care who you are. Uh, Everyone has a right to self-defense. So it's just kind of built. And the funny thing is, it's never, like the story about my family never really inspired me to get into guns. What, What got me into guns was just, I really enjoyed action movies growing up and then my buddy took me shooting and I, you know, I was a spoiled little Los Angeles boy, and, I, and I'll admit that. And I never cared about the Constitution or politics or this, you know, the State of the Union or anything like that. And finally, when Obama started running in 2008, I kind of started paying attention. And I realized, I'm like, whoa, here I thought all Jews were Democrats. I'm like, no, I'm not a Democrat. Hell, I'm not even a Republican. I'm like a 3% Tea Party patriot you know, hoorah, mother effer, you know, like, I'm like, oh, oh you're an extremist. Yeah. I'm an extremist. <laughs> and, um, and then from there, I kind of, you know, bought my first gun. I was again, living in Los Angeles, bought my first gun. My parents found out, freaked out, even though I was married and out of the house. Um, and from there I was like, you know what, if I'm going to, if I'm going to be a gun owner, I need to be a responsible gun owner. And that means I need to make sure my kids are safe that kind of led me to write my first book because there was nothing like my book on the market. And then when I was writing my book, 27 words, which is a, an introduction, well, not an intro, it's more of a a breakdown of the 27 words of the second amendment for children. I was writing that and I was talking to a second amendment historian and he's like, you know, you're kind of like the pew pew Jew. And, you know, from there, it just was like, all right, full throttle with the pew pew g let's get a logo <laughs> let's let's just work hard and getting that up and running and one thing led to another and and you know my first book I, I hell i didn't even think i'd ever be published ever like no one ever thinks they're actually gonna be published especially i had horrible horrible self-esteem growing up like horrible self-esteem so i was like yeah you know i'm just a loser i'll never amount to that much i'll you know i'll get married have kids be a you know accountant or some freaking Jewish job that we all have and (laughs) Jewish accountant, accountant, right? (laughs) And, um, you know, I, I, that's what I thought, honestly, that's what I thought until like all of a sudden my book was published after five and a half years of trying to get my first book published. And the next thing I know, you know, I have people like Alan Gottlieb and, and, uh, God, I don't even like it. Just, uh, Masada Yub all, you know, giving me endorsements and saying, oh, this book is fantastic. It needs to be in every children's, you know, every, every household in the country. And, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, hey, ho, ho, you know, slow down there. I'm a nobody. Like, stop, 
stop building up something that will come crashing down um, or getting my hopes up, if you will. And all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I have one book published. Let's write more. And so which title was your first? Was it safety on year. or the ABCs? Yeah. Safety on was my first. Okay. Safety on the coloring book version was my second. Then I believe was the ABCs of guns, 27 words. No, I'm sorry. Let me backtrack. It was safety on, safety on coloring book. ABCs of guns. Then came 10 little liberals. Mm -hmm. Then came, then came 27 words. Then 10 little gun grabbers. Nope, sorry. Back one more. 105 <laughs> explosive gun jokes. 105 explosive gun jokes. Then came 10 little gun grabbers. And then came bullet points. All right. That's pretty funny. You went from not thinking you were going to have one book published to really having a trouble remembering which order they came in. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it, it's crazy. And, and you know, my, my entire brand is based on you know, I, I like to say think grunt style for Jews, uh, you know, if, if you will. Um, and, you know, I have just a lot of self-deprecating stuff. Everything is Jewish and, and pro-gun. Um, but, you know, like I said, I have a lot of non-Jews buying my stuff. Like this shirt right here is great because I have so many people reaching out to me. They're like, hey, we're not Jewish, but is it okay if we, you know, is it appropriate for us to buy that shirt and wear it? Oh, I'm, like, it's anti -Semitic. I'm like, it's anti-Semitic if you don't buy it. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> like are we, so, are we, it's, are we allowed? Yeah, you're, you're allowed. I yeah, no, I, I get that all the time. I get that all the time. Are we allowed to buy your stuff if we're not Jewish? I'm like, yes. Oh, yes, take your please. I, I, yeah, I, 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 see, you're nicer than me. I would say no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. No, you're not. So allowed. what do you think the, why do you think that a lot of Jews nowadays are aligned with the Democrat party and the Democrat values when clearly they're taking us on a path with, it is similar to Towards what slavery. led to the Nazis. Well, that's a, I mean, that's again, you know, a whole uh, series of podcasts in itself. But in short, you got to, you kind of have to go back into history where you, you have Jews in Europe, you know, you have the pogroms and you have murders and rapes and stuff like that. And if the Jews would retaliate, if they would kill a Cossack, for example, the Cossacks would come and kill a hundred Jews for one Cossack killed. Right. So, Jews in Europe just kept tried to keep their head down and whatever happened, happened, right? It, it, it is, this is just what God wants. Just that's it. Flash forward to, you know, the uh, 1920s and you have, you know, the, the, the deal, what's that, the, the new deal and the second new deal or whatever it was called mm -hmm. from FDR. Um, and then not at, was it FDR? I don't, honestly, I'm so tired. Um, but you get you get my point. You have you know all these social programs, right? Then you have the Holocaust. You have the Holocaust, and that hundreds of thousands of surviving Jews made their way to America after the Holocaust. But they came with nothing, literally nothing, not a penny in their pocket, and whatever clothes were on them, that was it. They get to America, they find a place to live, and they're like, well, how do we survive? but you have all of these social programs in place that can help them. So which, which uh, political party was the one that brought that on? It was a Democratic Party. So you have all these Jews now becoming, and again, this is just a, a massive nutshell of an answer, right? Like there's, there's a lot more to it. I don't want people to think like, oh, it's that, it wasn't that simple. It wasn't that simple, but this is just to save time. Um, and now you have a bunch of Jews in America who are completely devoted to a party that is continuously giving them things to help them. And, you know, the 40s happens, the 50s happens, then you have the 60s, and Jews are still Democrats because, hey, my father was, you know, my father came and the Democratic Party helped him, so we're Democrats. And one thing led to another, and Jews have just remained Democrats, uh, very pro-Democrats. Now, a lot of a lot of Orthodox Judaism tends to be more Republican and right wing because they are, you know, a lot more right, uh, you know, right to um, 
right to life, pro life, uh, and they the public party tends to be more of the religious party, right? More of the Judeo Christian value party. So a lot of Orthodox Jews tend to swing right. But that's really the nutshell of an answer why so many Jews still uh, rely on the Democratic Party. But keep in mind also, a lot of Jews nowadays are what I call ginos, right? They're Jews in name only. Mm. Right? They, they worship the liberal party. To them, it's liberalism over Judaism. So Judaism comes a very distant second. Oh, that's 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 very common. That's, not just with that's it's not just with 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 Jews or, or uh, it's with everything. It's like how how does how does a religion. a woman who claims to be a feminist support the Democrat Party, which is overpopulated with rapists and, and people who treat you know how did how did women support Bill Clinton, a serial rapist, yeah. right? Uh, how did and, and it, you could just name the the group because it's always it's always liberalism over everything else. It's liberal first, feminist second. It's liberal first, Jew second. It's you know whatever uh, it happens to be. It's the same thing with Christians. You have people who come who portend to be faithful Christians and and vote for Democrats. Uh, the cognitive dissonance there is is staggering. It's staggering, uh, but that's that is the lie of li- well. Michael Savage said it best: liberalism is a mental disorder. Uh, it it yep. literally it's it's a mental disorder uh, that people embrace, and they and because that's the the default is to allow somebody else. You know, there's the you know the difference between and and I really I really get sick of the whole liberal conservative thing. But but the fact is, we have to have some type of labels to describe things. But right. uh, when you have somebody who says, oh, I am a fill in the blank, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a Jew, whatever. And you're like, yeah, but this group that you're associating yourself with is they're contrary to everything you claim is your values. You know, it, it's like sportsmen for Biden, you know, <laughs> they, when, when, you know, they came up with this. They did. The, they started that crap with Clinton sportsman for Clinton. And then they moved it to sportsman for Obama. And then they're like, sportsman for Biden. I'm like, first of all, that's not a thing. That's like, that's like (laughs) Jews for Hitler. You know, that, that, that'd be like the rabbi saying, you know, the settler guy's got some good ideas. You know, he's into kindergarten and stuff. He wants everyone to have a car. He's going to build good roads and we're going to be able to drive super fast on them. What's your problem? Yeah. Trains will yeah. be on time and everything. Yeah, people. The trains. Yeah, that was. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that that was uh, <laughs> Mussolini. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Then. Mussolini. Uh, yeah. Jared, so, I, what, Jared, what, I, I'm, I'm I'm texting you right now. I came up. It's not for public, but I'm texting you right now. Okay. This is a sure way that if anyone comes at you with any Nazi jokes, Holocaust jokes, or any kind of anti-Semitic thing. Um, this is a sure way to shut them down because they will have no response. I hey, came up with funny. that. Yeah, that's funny. Right? Like, yeah, the, yeah short, short-lived movements. Like, like you know, yeah. sportsman for Biden. <laughs> yeah, sportsman for funny. Obama. Sure, sure. Okay. So I need uh, to take a hard left turn and go take a hard left to or hard the, right. Uh, the family story that Yehuda shared earlier. Did you ever get to talk to your grandfather about what the will to live was? Why did they stay in the ditch for so long? No, he he tried not to talk about it. Um, every now and then you would get snippets of it, but he wasn't. Um, he was very anti living in the past. And what I mean by that is. I have three older cousins and I have an older brother. And a lot of times after an Orthodox Jewish boy or girl graduate from high school, they go to Israel for the year, right? To a yeshiva or like a girl's seminary type of thing. Yeah. And when you're in Israel, there's a lot of organizations that will take you on these Holocaust oriented trips to Poland, Ukraine, Prague, Germany, all these places. So all my cousins wanted to go and my brother wanted to go. And my, every time they would mention it, you know, they, 
my grandfather in his like deep, deep European accent would go, if you go back to Europe, I will drop dead. Right. Like, like, like that's it. Right. And they're like, well, great. Now he's going to die if we go. So like, no, no one ever went. When I was in Israel for my year, I basically called my parents. I told them I'm going. And if they tell my grandfather, I will disappear in Israel and they'll never find me again. <laughs> like, I'm like, like I'll, I'll literally run away. And my parents were like, okay, fine. Um, even though they were kind of against it, but they were like, okay, fine. When years later, we're talking about 10 years later, um, we were all my cousins. We were all by my grandfather's apartment. We're all hanging out. And I don't remember how it happened, but someone kind of let slip that I'd gone to Europe, uh -oh. uh, to Poland, Prague, and Ukraine. And my grandfather, so my full name is Gershon Yehuda. My first name is Gershon. So my grandfather, that's what, I'm named after my great grandfather who passed away in that ditch. So my, my grandfather was like, Gershon, you went to Poland and Ukraine and saw what the Nazis did. And I'm like, and like, I'm like, I'm going to own it, right? I'm like, yes, yes, Grandpa, I did. He goes, I'm so, so proud of you. <laughs> 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 and my, my cousins and my older brother were all like, what the f Like, Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And, and I'm just sitting there, you know, feeling like a million bucks. And, <sighs> um, and he, starts at, he starts asking me about it. But only a few years later, he started coming down with um, dementia. So we we never really got to talk to him. But what was crazy, though, is my other grandfather, my mother's father, his story of survival is ridiculous. I mean, we're talking about he was in 11 different camps at age 14. He was pulling gold teeth out of bodies in Auschwitz. And his story is crazy. But when he made his way to America after the war, he never talked about his time. Um he saw, his, you know, his father was killed in Auschwitz. He was liberated by the Americans, so felt a immense gratitude to the point where he joined the Air Force and worked on, like, some top secret radar MIG thing in, like, the late 50s during the Korean War. Um, and we first kept from him that I had gone to Europe. We just didn't want to upset him. But eventually, um, my grandfather was an amazing photographer, and I get a lot of my photography genes from him. Uh, we're talking about he had like a Leica M3 that's in pristine condition, uh, which which I actually have up now. And if oh, I want to, cool. yeah, I mean, we're talking about like original lenses, not a dent, no not way. a scratch. Um, original Leica case, like this is from 1954, this camera, to the point where if I approach like a Japanese collector, I probably can get 30, 40, 50 grand for it. Yeah. Like that, it has a, a light meter. I mean, we're talking about all of it. So um, my my grandfather saw, I when I went to Europe my first time, I took pictures for myself of Poland and Ukraine. And the head of the organization that I went on saw my photos and my second year in Israel invited me to become the official photographer for the trip. So That's I cool. made this, yeah, it was very cool. I was like 18, 19. It was like my first real job. I was like, why is he asking me? I don't know what the hell I'm doing with the camera. I'm still shooting on automatic. Like I didn't know <laughs> how to use the manual mode. And um, But at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, my grandfather saw this book of pictures that I made and he's looking through the book and like my grandmother and my mom, my dad are like freaking out. They're like, he's going to just go ballistic. And all of a sudden like tears start rolling down his eyes again, because my, my other grandfather was hid by farmers. You can't really say he was part of, the actual Holocaust, right? He never was in the concentration camp. And I mean, again, he was part of the whole Nazi persecution, but he was never in a hall. He was never in a concentration camp or never really was in that scenario where my other grandfather was actually in. Uh, I mean, he went to 11 different camps, including Auschwitz. He had the numbers tattooed on his arm. 
Um, so he had all this stuff. So he's all of a sudden he's looking through this book and he just sees tears. And he's like, you know, Yehuda, come here. And I sat down next to him and he's like, did you go to Europe and take these photos? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, grandpa, I did. You know, I felt it was very important for me to go see what happened to you and document what I saw from my own eyes, not through history's eyes, but from my own eyes. And he closes the book. And like my said, my, like my parents and my grandmother are standing like five feet behind him. And he just starts a lot of information. We're talking about like, like I said, pulling, like he was 14, pulling gold teeth from dead bodies and, and telling me stories about what happened. And, and all of a sudden, like my, I hear everyone like bawling in the background, but like, they don't yeah. want to, they don't want to say anything because they want him to keep talking. And after he was done, he kind of just quietly went upstairs and kind of disappeared for the rest of the day. But my grandmother came up to me and gave me a huge hug and kiss and said, I've been married to him for 55 years and I have never heard one of those stories. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. So, you know, that definitely, you know, back to bringing it to guns, you know, I, I have a, and it's a very weird thing to say. I have a very rich history, uh, Holocaust history. Part, that's part of my family. Um, and that definitely has helped me become who I am today. I am vehemently pro-gun. Uh, I, I will not, I mean, 2A absolutist. Um, I mean, to the point where I, in my safe upstairs, I even have a Walther P-38 with Nazi insignia still stamped on the gun that I, I was able to get my hands on. Oh, that's a cool piece of history. It's a great piece of history. And, and you know, I bought it for two reasons. Oh, world, I used to work at a gun store and the World War II veteran came in and my boss bought it and I just turned to the boss like, I want it. And I, I, he gave it to me for an, an insane deal. I mean, I think it was like three seventy five. He gave it to me for because he knew, wow, or maybe it was four hundred. Because either knew, way, yeah, yeah, he, he knew that the reason why I wanted it, and he was like, yeah, I can probably make. You know, he I think he bought it off the guy for like three hundred, but like he knew like is the seven hundred dollars that he might make worth the reasons why I want it. Yeah. And now my kids have seen it. Uh, you know, I bought it for two reasons. A, there's no bigger F you to Hitler. <laughs> it's like, right. Like literally no bigger F you to Hitler. But also I, I, as that, that's the Jewish aspect, but as the second amendment activist aspect, I want my kids to understand that even though the Eagle and swastika are stamped on the side of this gun, that, a gun is a tool and in the hands of the Nazis, it was used for evil. But in my safe, if I ever take it out in our hands, it will never be used for evil. In other words, a gun is a tool, nothing more. Yeah. And it's a very good history lesson for my children to help them understand the importance of the second amendment. Yeah, that's a fantastic lesson. How old are your kids? My oldest is 13, then I have an 11-year-old, a 7-year-old, and then um, Satan Reborn is 21 months. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, he, my, my, my baby, um, if he was my first, my wife and I would have been one and done. <laughs> he, he is, my, my older three were near perfect children. I mean, never had an issue. They, they were just... I mean, hey, we want like we want to take a nap, so like go upstairs. They would go into their beds and take a nap without like telling her. Like just the perfect children, never complain, never whine. But then this last one is like, like I guess I'm, he's like Satan reborn. I don't I like, like when when he starts really bothering me, I yell at him that I'm going to use the two year return policy on him. But, uh, <laughs> Put that thing back where I, I came I, from. I, yeah, but I love him. He's he is chubby and cute, and he is just one of the funniest kids I have ever dealt with. Not just my kids, from my my nieces and nephews, and he is just mischievous to everything, and I I love it. So 
It's just a payment. It'll be good for you. Yeah, I've read oh, a lot absolutely. of these, uh, a lot of stories. I have a few books back here that are written by kids that are that were they were written as an adult, but they were kids that went through the Holocaust and went through several different camps and whatnot. So, reading those books, I've always wondered. Well, it's made me realize that the the human like desire for survival is extremely powerful. But also I've always wondered what is the will to survive for people that are going through something like that? Is it their family? Is it because they want to, to take an ice pick and, and like say, F you, I made it through this to the people that did it to them. I don't, I don't know what, the- I mean, it, I, I guess everyone has their own reasons. Um, what I would say is if you read Victor Frankl's man's search for meaning, yeah. Um, right. And he talks about his idea, which he created called logotherapy. And the notion is if you can find one thing, no matter how small it is, that is worth living, you can overcome absolutely anything. And again, it can be for everyone. It's different, but you know, if, if you're, you know, if your, your drive for living is, so that you can buy that freaking Ferrari that you saved up for. Now, you and I might be said, you know what, screw it, we'll die over that. You know, we don't care. But for someone to, who that, if that means enough to them, that their, their will for survival and for living is that strong that they want to buy something like that, they'll be able to do it. And I read that book when I was in Israel. And man, Man's Search for Meaning is absolutely a life-changing book. And if you haven't read it, I cannot recommend it enough. You know, I suppose this is something that I could ask dad because he's been in situations multiple times in his life where he had to to find the goal to survive the situation. And if that's something you don't want to talk about on the radio, then that's fine. But um, if you do, then that would be awesome. Oh, yeah, this may throw the sand grenade at you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I pulled the pen out, threw the grenade to you. Here you go. Here you go. Catch. Uh, no, I can't. I, the main the well the thing that uh, helped me like 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 uh, first time I was in combat was and and I talked to a lot of combat veterans after this and they said that the thing that they did was they cleared the deck mentally they they removed everything that was superfluous everything that didn't that wasn't necessarily required for to do the job and they they just pushed that away and focused uh, and, and I, I know I, don't, I I have not read man search for meaning but I can tell you this that it, it's that mental focus and it's the ability to focus and have the clarity uh, that is absolutely needed and we I think a lot of people in our world today have a hard time because there's so much clutter and there's so much distraction and we, we really do our children a disservice by allowing them to to fall into this this web of clutter and distraction and in essentially meaningless nonsense where and we don't give them that say that solid foundation or we should give them that solid foundation we're like look everything else aside everything else is it's it's nonsense or like uh, what did solomon say it's chasing after wind because you know in in the was it Ecclesiastes? In Ecclesiastes, Solomon talks about it's all it's all wind, it's all chasing wind, uh, and and that's what we do uh, as humans. We we have a lot of we spend a lot of our time chasing wind, and and at the you know at the end of the day, you know who gives a crap about what's going on on socialist media or, or the Kardashians or whatever nonsense? It's just distraction. It's garbage, and we have to to pull back and and find out what is really important. And what's really valuable in our lives, and when it comes, and let just to take it all the way back to firearms is, you know, people with there have been numerous genocides throughout the history of the world. Uh, there's the Armenian genocide, you know. There's the the Jewish genocide. There's the, the you know, African, most recently, uh, genocides in Africa, genocide in Cambodia, genocide in China. Uh, one of the all of those things have one thing in common. None of the people who were genocided were armed. None, none, all these, these tens of hundreds of millions of people who were genocided, if that's a, if that's a verb, 
if we can use that as a verb, genocided, were part of an armed society, an armed culture, a culture where the people could possess arms. And, you know, the, the, the Democrats and the socialists and the communists and the people who want to control us, they just skip over that part and they want to talk about other things. And, but that's, you know, when, when it comes to control, when it comes to gun control, you have to ask yourself, and if people, you know, what if people in 1935 or uh, in Cambodia or in Rwanda or in Armenia or wherever, fill in the blank, if they would have all stood up and said, what is it about their agenda that requires us to be disarmed? What, what is it? What is it about this Hitler guy's agenda that requires us to be disarmed? What is it about Pol Pot's agenda that requires us to be disarmed? What, you know, Mao, fill in the blank. But we're there. And we're able to do that. And we can say, what is it about their agenda that requires us to be disarmed? And you can answer that question for yourself. But the fact of the matter is, no, no group uh, of people, no society, no culture has been genocided and been armed at the same time. And whether, you know, the... the the, the, these imbeciles are like I, I, I like that uh, somebody some uh, you know what an RIA is right Yehuda an RIA Rock Island Armory no a, a, <laughs> a random a random internet a hole so <laughs> that, that's a, never heard that before. yeah that's so funny. some some RIA jumped into our feed the other day and, and, he, and he's like ah if you think and he, he spouted the he had the he had the talking points from the from the liberal left from the CNN if if you think that that you can take on the army you've got another thing coming you're a fool or whatever it's like ha and, and I put laughs in Afghani slash laughs in Vietnamese like <laughs> really <laughs> really homeboy <laughs> That's probably uh, too smart for him. Yeah, laughing in Afghani, laughing in Vietnamese. Like, that's exactly what they did. We had peasant farmers with, with rifles that took on the most powerful army in, in the world Plus, and won. Yeah, kind of what you just said, which is the thing that they don't want to say out loud when they're talking about the stuff. It's like, oh, you, you think you can take on the army? It's like, no, but me and a couple hundred other people like me can. It's like, we, they, 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 we wanna, can. They, they want to imply that you're alone, that it will be you against the entire Marine Corps. That's what they want to imply and make you think. Right, can, can we just take a quick break and say that that just freaked I like I just got totally like what, where my brain went. Like all of a sudden someone's talking, but no one's lips are moving. <laughs> and, and, about and, that producer. And no no to, totally i mean there's a literally a green box around you when you talk and i guess it's been you've been so quiet the whole time that all of a sudden i'm like like i can't I, oh my god yeah whatever I, I just, <laughs> that was a total <laughs> mind bed just now he's like yes lord yeah, <laughs> that's pretty funny. pretty much yeah i'm like I'm like where i'm like is there that big of a delay you know where like, is this voice coming from? yeah i'll uh i got one more thing to say and then i'll wrap it up yeah here. we need to put a, a I, cork in this bottle i had an epiphany the other day uh, if you've read plato's republic you know that they he had what he considered the five regimes it was aristocracy democracy oligarchy which degraded into democracy which then degraded into tyranny and he they, they presume that that's just the cycle of governments. And so it was kind of uh, disheartening for me because we're, you know, if that is the case, then we're headed to tyranny. However, I realized that we're not a democracy. I mean, I realized a long time ago, but I didn't apply it in this fashion. There is no, there was no, we are the first representative Republic. So we are probably going to be able to break that cycle, right? If we have the, the, the people that are willing to have the knowledge and that are willing to make that cycle break, then I think that we can do that. So, well, Rome was a republic, but what didn't they have? Yeah, they didn't, ha they didn't acknowledge that there, there were inherent rights for the humans. Yeah, Rome was a republic, but they didn't have a bill of rights. Yeah. You know, everybody in the world, every, you know, freaking North Korea has a constitution. Um, but what does that mean? 
it means it means nothing without without rights without god given rights without rights that are affirmed uh, by your creator everything else is just is just a privilege from a dictator uh, and how's that how's that dictate yeah that's that's why we're different that's that's why we have the potential to be different and that's why we that's why they hate us so much that's why the the world's dictators and the, and the world's tyrants they just hate us because we're the bad example that for their people we're that example that you know they're over there doing their thing and they're going to make our people think that they should be free too so they got to do everything they can to silence us and destroy us and, and we're doing it from within but uh Pew Pew, Yehuda, um, thank you very much for joining us today. I, I'm sh- I hope everyone appreciated it. If you don't, well, then just tough nuggies. Go somewhere else and uh, listen to something better else. Better taste. Get better taste. That's yeah. right. Go get better well, taste and come back. Me. Where can people go yeah. to find the shirts and whatnot, and all your books? Um, if you want, uh, I'm across social media at the Pew Pew Jew and then the Pew Pew Jew.com. You can get signed copies of my books, t shirts camo yarmulkes i mean you name it so a lot of fun stuff at my site are are, oh, are uh, gentiles allowed to buy your stuff they absolutely are okay. uh, it would be anti- it would be anti-semitic if you don't buy it <laughs> <laughs> are you all out of the uh the ar the the box cars no that's that's i those are Right now, everything with the AR box car, the the cattle car shirts, mm-hmm. flags, all that that's all print on demand. So oh, okay. as long as, but I am I am in the middle of having those made into patches. So awesome, uh, patches will be will be uh, you know soon. There you go. All right. Yep. Yeah, we got to, so go to the go to the pewpewju dot com, and you can get a kosher shirt, or you can get the. Uh, the the boxcar shirt or whatever you want to get. Uh, Just, there's one that says I trigger hoplophobes. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe no one has come up with that yet. I was so proud of myself. Like I scoured the internet for a shirt like that. I'm like, how has no one come up with I trigger hoplophobes? That's pretty funny. So yeah, it's definitely funny when you walk through the mall and it's pretty people... it's like way up here. It's like it's so far <laughs> up here like yeah they they think like all like like oh so you hate gay people i'm like no no like oh it's like, like, it's like yeah you know, that's it yeah you're, that, yeah, that's yeah. It. You, you you're you're the smartest you, you, you figured it out there. congratulations yeah no that that shirt um like you actually have to it's so simple but like you actually have to get the play on words yeah so yeah i'm i'm, I'm a big fan of that one that's good how so dare you make one people think? Pew-pew-ju.com. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Yehuda, for joining us. And uh, we're, we're, we can, I guess we're at the end, aren't we, Zach? Yep. We could close it. Yeah, we can uh, yep. We can close it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. We'll be back tomorrow on Thursday for a bonus hour. If you're not part of the bonus hour, if you're not part of the grad program, you can be by going to getsotg.com. Sign up and uh, get all the wonders that is the grad program. Until we're together again. Remember, you're a beginner once, you're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at Studentofthegun.com.